Welcome to XR Weapon Rifle Design Ideas. So just like the last two videos, I'm going to talk through some of the design ideas that I've had on different ways to do an XR rifle in a realistic type of way. And just one of the reasons that I've been talking through all these ideas on the previous and on this one is also to put these ideas into the public domain. So I'm working on this as a very small entity right now. I don't have the time, the resources, any of that to really even waste time with patents and that. Plus, I don't want this information to be restricted and to make it so a small group of people control access to inaccessible ways to be able to train. And so there's three different ways on the rifle side that I see this as really being viable. So most people, I make the assumption, that would be interested in this level of realism probably already have some ARs lying around because they're everywhere for people really interested in this stuff. And since the lower and the upper both mate and unmate very easily, the idea of using the existing lower so that there's a lot less that needs to be produced, you're able to get the cost lower, you're able to have the exact same ergonomics of whatever it is you like, your stock, your grip, if you've got a bad, an ambi, any of that kind of stuff, that it's all the exact same for muscle memory purposes. And so in that type of a setup, you're able to still interact with the trigger because if you end up pushing the hammer down to the correct area, your trigger now has full motion, whereas up here it's engaged. If you take a little bit of that weight off the trigger, there's a sweet spot. And now this may change between lowers. I haven't done exhaustive testing because tons and tons of them with different trigger packs, lots of money and all that. I do know a number of the drop-in trigger packs will not play nice with this. Uh, my trigger tech won't. I don't think my tech on 3MR will either. And so, like, it does, I believe, require mil-spec triggers for this approach to work. But it's essentially where I'd be able to have a mock-upper. You'd have on the front where you still have a barrel nut, so you can mount whatever handguard. You'd have to have a separate one for this approach, of course. The controller would end up being mounted in the same approach that I use for the pistol, probably up around this height, so then a charging handle... Uh, like real one can still move underneath there. There'd be a connecting rod then by using a little insert in the lower. With an insert that is mounted oops, wrong way, like this, and then with that lower, see how this part moves when you pull the trigger? You have this little connecting section. So then you can mate that to whatever linkage assembly is going to go up and move the actual trigger. Now, I'd probably need either some more movement or I just have to use angles to multiply that small amount of movement into more on the trigger. But then I'd want to stick with the same control scheme. So the grip button would need to have probably a Bowden tube based rod to a weapon light that can mount up on that front rail section as well. We'd end up needing to be able to have rod linkage from magazine to track the state on the A button. And then we'd need to have the charging handle and the bolt release both map over onto the B button on there. Except since the pistol is right-handed based, this is going to need to be left-handed based because of course you're going to want to be able to have both weapons at the same time. So that is approach number one where you use an actual lower. And so what I had done previously in some other designs, so this was a replacement bolt. So you could just pull the bolt out of your upper, you could throw this in, and then you've got your clicky switch back here that would sit up on top here. So whenever you'd pull that trigger, this would be activated. And then we had state buttons for magazine and bolt release here. So there was no charging handle support on here. I just punted on that. And so this would then connect out the side to the where dust cover goes, ejection port, to a TRS cable to an Arduino microcontroller on top. And this was iteration two. Iteration one, annealing on this was horrible. I ripped it apart. Parts, don't judge it. You'd end up pulling the trigger out, and then this would mate into the lower, 
and it had all those same states, but moving that from this assembly over to this assembly, and this was something I had never released, it was just testing ideas that I had worked on internally, made it so you had a real fast, like 10 second way to change a weapon out from real over to training. But the microcontroller on top, the cables, all that, it just, there was a lot more logistics involved in being able to make that happen. And so there's history, idea one. So idea two, no real lower involved there. So this is friendly in states where that type of stuff is frowned upon. It also will be fully 3D printable, I believe. And so the idea would be you end up having a standard grip set up here. You bump the controller up maybe two, three inches, so you still can actually have a beaver tail on the back, a proper grip on there. You'd have linkage that goes between this finger and the trigger up here. So then whenever you pull, it's able to go like this. You could end up having some type of a break and reset in there. Ideally reusable between the XR pistol design, whatever I end up doing on there. The side here, I'd probably have it so that that button is accessible still with the thumb over on the side, just for compatibility reasons, really. Then there'd need to end up being linkage for these to be able to track the magazine state, bolt release, and charging handle on there. And potentially a thing down the road, maybe do like a Bowden tube-based thing to move a joystick out over to the side there. But unless I'm able to find some games where I can really get away with the one-handed plus, like maybe I even end up doing like a Picatinny rail mount thing where you can place the other controller on the side. I've been playing some Breachers lately, and I'll be jumping back into Pavlov, Contractors, all the ones where there's a possibility because they have decent weapon configuration to maybe be able to do these in the future. But I'm, I probably won't have any models released on the rifle for a couple months at this point. I'm just trying to get the software finalized and get the pistol finalized before I really let myself get deeper into this. And now we have approach number three, which approach number three goes back over to having a lower. Yeah, I've, I've gone with tons of ideas like this. I have a hard time getting away from them. Like it just, it provides so much of the authentic feel. So like, why not? So um, number three, there is no insert that goes in here. And of all of them, this is the most audacious. So like, even if I end up doing this one later, I'll have one of the other two out first, most likely, because this just seems more involved. So whenever I, so I'm going to have no pressure on here. I'm going to pull the trigger. Trigger's going to go. So if you stop the trigger right here after it breaks, then you have something to bring it back down there and then let go. So Rotary motion would not be a good idea here. So like I've got a real large motor with an arm sitting right over here. This would not be a good idea on there. This would be good for doing, say, simulated recoil on a stock. This came out of a massage gun. And I do actually want to be because this rotary to linear, this will generate a decent force that you could use in a fake stock. Sort of think the results for ProTube, but more violent which is really the goal in all of this, because the more violent, the more realistic. Idea for a project another day, though. And I would really like to be able to actually have a drop-in replacement stock if I, I go Route 1 or 3. Route 2, because of controller. Actually, yeah, with it up here, I still can use real one. It's the one down here where I wouldn't be able to have something like that. But if I end up doing the one up here, which I... I, I lean towards that one by default for me, but I know accessibility-wise, the one down here is probably better. Okay, back over to idea number three. So you end up have a line, having a linear actuator, and maybe even there's an extra cam up here to multiply the force on there, but you've got a stop block up top. So you pull the trigger, it goes, it hits the stop block. Once it hits that, we've got a clicky switch that's on there. It identifies that. And there'd be a microcontroller like Arduino involved in this one for taking care of the insides. It would activate the linear actuator. And we'd probably have like a 
2s or 4s. I don't know the voltages I'd need for a linear actuator. I'm guessing like up around the 4 or 5s range or something. But once that's activated, the microcontroller is then going to end up. Actually, I should probably hold that for pull. So it'll come. It'll do the reset like this. It'll back off. So then you can have your real trigger break and reset. Oops. Come back down here. Your reset. And so you'd have your linear actuator with a stop lock there so that you can have actual trigger state that's involved here. Since we've already got a microcontroller involved, I'd want to have something coming down on here so that I'm able to read data wise. And like, yeah, I know this isn't going to apply to anything existing out there. It would really just be in Augmented Defender and then and it'd be available as an approach to anybody that really wants that data. The other thing I'd really like, but I, I don't think I can get out of an all metal setup like this would be if your fingers on the trigger by using capacitive, but everything metal uh, doesn't exactly work without like a special training lower. And yeah, that's, I'm not going there <laughs> at least any time in the near future. I'd end up doing the exact same tracking that I do for everything. This I really would see as a follow-up for the lower base setup earlier because I'd already have all those other linkages and things working. It'd really be, or no, they'd, it doesn't make sense as a follow-up. See, I talk through these things so I can rubber duck this against myself and see how ideas change. So we'd actually have a setup really similar like this here, since we've got a microcontroller there. We'd end up tracking the state of both of these. We'd have a long pool spring to be able to ride the charging handle back up. Heck, maybe it even would make sense to have like a distance sensor up top, an optical one. So then we actually can have analog input for how far that is. So then if you're clearing a stoppage or just for cool looks, you can have the charging handle match up in game one to one. And another thing for way down the road again. But that's the basic idea for the super involved one is we end up having full real trigger, whatever your brick. And so the nice thing with that, that should work with any trigger at all. So if you got hyper fire trigger tech, whatever your poison is that you really like, and that I think should work with everything. And then there's the idea. So if you guys have any other ideas that you want to add to the pool and stuff or that you might like to see once I start working on getting this design released, go ahead and drop that in the comments or join us on Discord. I'm trying to get as many people in the Discord as possible just so that we have a better way to share and embed ideas. All my design ideas as I'm doing iterations, I drop in there to get feedback. And I've gotten a ton of good ideas already, even though we don't have a ton of people yet. So feel free if this interests you. Drop in there. Hope to see you around. Have a good one.